Hello and welcome to Building Context. This is a series of videos that we're doing on APIs and API security. My name is Chris Westfall. I head up product marketing here at Salt Security. And today, again, I'm joined by Michael Spitsky. He's our technical evangelist. Michael, welcome to the episode. Hi, Chris. Great to be here again. Glad to have you back. Uh, you know, we're continuing the conversation on um, API attacks and, and trying to put some, some definitions around and, and talk a little bit more about the threats that are out there, what people are after, what attackers are after and hopefully help uh, the defenders get in the right mindset to, uh, to put the right protections in place. And today on our, our mini series on API attacks, we're talking about data exfiltration. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know, you know, when I, when you and I were talking earlier, my head, uh, when I, when I thought about data exfiltration, I always think about, um, you know, extracting data in mass, dumping a database, trying to get some large amount of, of, of data, but how would you define data exfiltration? Yep. Yeah, it's a great question, Chris. Uh, so, it, you know, for me, and when I talk to practitioners and organizations that are worried about this, you know, data risk, uh, you know, data exfiltration is kind of this big bucket of uh, desirable goals, I'd say, as as an attacker, I want to get access to data uh, that I might not be act, uh, you know, authorized for. Uh, typically, that's, you know, you want high volumes of it, you know, if I can extract all all the records or, you know, all your user credentials, that that's the ideal state. Uh, but that's not necessarily a distinguishing characteristic, I would say, you know, maybe you're just going after one user. So if you can just extract all the information about them, that might be one record or you know, a small handful of records, right? So it's, it's not necessarily high volume. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's different ways attackers uh, kind of achieve that goal of data exfiltration. Uh, you know, we talked on a prior episode about scraping, you know, which is certainly API centric. We're seeing a lot of those types of attack patterns, but it, it usually infers uh, automated mechanisms like scripting or using automation tooling to, you know, frequently request APIs for uh, a record or small sets of records, and then you, you piece things together, right? And then you can kind of pull, pull together your entire database. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's interesting too, you know, because like you said, we were talking earlier, it's that there is the, kind of this security, traditional security mindset that you know, like exfiltration is, well, I'm going to steal the whole database, right? And, you know, maybe I'm going to attack the server directly, you know, the yeah. SQL server, I'm going to pull off the copy of that database. Um, those attacks can still happen, right? That's um, some of what you see in, uh, I'd say, zero trust and uh, limiting blast radius, right? You don't want somebody in your internal network getting access to servers or workloads. Um, but for most organizations, the risk is actually, you know, you are going to expose access through some API, uh, yeah. access to data, right? And now as an attacker, uh, I might use a variety of techniques to get to that data and then pull it out, right? So data exfiltration is just it's all about getting that data out of the system and then you know, I'm, I'm likely going to start piecing that together or use it in you know some other type of attack like social engineering yeah. or resell the data on the dark web so i guess a, a nice simple definition is any unauthorized access to, to data right yep. and it can be a yep. single record or it could be a you know a full database right yep. so and there, and there are different methods as you mentioned i mean uh, no longer does it, an attacker necessarily have to go through the um, jump through hoops and you know uh, move laterally through an organization to get to the SQL server. Uh, oftentimes, they can they can get to their goal by either manipulating the API to scrape data, like you mentioned, or looking for ways to get the API to cough up to get the API to get the uh, SQL server to cough up a bunch of data. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can talk a little bit about the different um, methods that that an attacker would use if they're targeting an API. Yeah. So, I mean, we talked about scraping, um, you know, and scraping usually infers the, the API it's, it could be leaky. So it's going to provide more data. I'm going to automate attacks against that. Maybe it's got weaker uh, access controls or rate limiting. So now I can hit that thing much more rapidly. Uh, mm -hmm. But that that's not a given, right? Um, you know, there's certain types of signaling attacks, right? Or covert channels where, you know, maybe I can just create some system condition, check for that externally, and then just based on that response, I can start to piece together, you know, what, what's going on in the back end and kind of piece together data streams from that. Um, so, I, you know, 
for most attackers these days, the scra scraping is uh, is a massive kind of um, technique, right? Because yeah. it, it is pretty simple. There's a lot of automation tooling. It's easy to write those scripts. And as we know, APIs are being built to offer up data, particularly you know public APIs or APIs on social media platforms. Like data, data is the business, so they are always going to offer up um, types of data. Um, we also see things like injection flaws. They can still happen, right? Like yeah. in, in the case of, you know, database, uh, you know, SQL injection still, still prominent, right? And those things can happen in APIs. Um, it could also be other types of more API specific injection attacks like XML injection or JSON injection, where I'm injecting some type of code into the payload that now the backend system is, you know, either going to give me uh, admin level access, right? That's more privilege escalation, but it, it could also result in, well, now it's gonna dump all the data, right? Or or maybe give me data I'm not authorized for. And then we're, we're squarely in that kind of data exfiltration camp. So yeah. yeah, it's interesting, right? It's kind of what we started with where we said, it's, it's not necessarily a technique. Data exfiltration is kind of the end goal. Right. So you might start with um, some type of injection attack to see if you can escalate privileges or access other functionality. Mm -hmm. And then as an attacker, you find out, well, I can actually get access to these large sets of data. So now I'm gonna exfiltrate data. Uh, it, it can kind of play out that way, right? So yeah. it's, you have to be flexible as an attacker, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the techniques vary, you know, on, on how you get to that data. Um, but yeah, attackers would typically do reconnaissance, right? We've talked about that in other episodes, like assess the target. What, what is their business? Like what data are they likely holding? How, how are they exposing that information via APIs? And then I would most likely target them directly. Well, I, um, I, I would guess that if an attacker is using some of the more, what I would consider to be more traditional methods for getting to say a database, um, you know, we have protections in place. You mentioned zero trust and there's a whole mm -hmm. um, realm of, of solutions that, that help in a zero trust environment and, and help to prevent some of that lateral movement. You mentioned things like injection attacks. And I know there are some traditional tools that um, can identify attack patterns like that. But when it gets into, when you get a little bit deeper into um, APIs and, and attackers manipulating APIs, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have signatures. We don't have things that can look for a right. particular attack pattern. So how, how should people start approaching this? I mean, what, what do you look at yeah. uh, beyond the, the traditional stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, th this is something, it's like a recurring theme in a lot of our, our discussions, right? It's kind of, you, you have, it's very true, right? How you build that, how you design that API and then the code you use to build it. Uh, and all the infrastructure that supports it is going to be unique per architecture and organization. Yeah. So you're absolutely right, right? Like a, a WAF can catch some types of injection attacks, but not all, right? It's going to look for the typical, like an SQL injection. It might be that's, you know, a uh, single tick, uh, some, something equals something, and then terminate the statement. Um, yeah. So very basic types of attacks. You can do those types of filters in, you know, most, proxies, even an API gateway, or even a, a, a network load balancer. Yeah. Um, so it's it's much more about um, looking at how your uh, API callers are consuming the API. Uh, how, how are they accessing data? How are they pulling out data, right? Like kind of looking at the behaviors, which technically is a lot of traffic patterns. Uh, yeah. But also the metadata of that API, what, what is it doing? What is it interfacing with? You know, that complete picture. And as we talk about it, kind of the context, right? How, what is this API doing? How are uh, clients interfacing with it, right? And you can start to establish baselines, that, you know, as you collect that telemetry and analyze it. And then, um, you know, analyze the, or um, detect those deviations, right? Or um, yeah. anomalies, right? And that, that's typically your attacker. So re regardless of the technique, you know, uh, we, we talk about quite a few injection attacks, uh, scraping, right? It's, uh, they're, they're slightly different. One is I'm gonna inject some code that shouldn't be there. Another is I'm uh, requesting the API excessively. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the, the end result is you're, you're pulling out this data. So it, you, you, you want something that could kind of uh, detect that, right? So you have to be examining the requests over time and, and piecing together, you know, how, how is somebody interfacing with this API? Yeah, well, you also mentioned um, 
you know, an attacker needs to basically understand the API and understand what the logic and, and how to manipulate it, where to manipulate the API. So I think from a defender standpoint, the goal is really to identify that attacker well before they send that injection command or well before they, you know, send the command to dump the database. And I think uh, during that reconnaissance period, you know, you talked about anomalies and, and um, how an attacker is going to generate a number of anomalies. Uh, the trick is trying to identify them early on in their process so you can stop yeah. them before they get to, you know, to that, yeah. that uh, malicious payload. So, yeah. Um, well, awesome. I, I think that's, uh, it's, you know, I, I, again, I think data exfiltration is a big kind of nebulous topic. I think um, there's, like you said, there's a bunch of different ways that an attacker can try and exfiltrate data, um, either a single record or, or a full database. Um, you really need to look beyond some of the traditional tools to, um, to identify them early in the process and hopefully stop them before they're successful. Yep. Um, well, Michael, thank you for joining again. I think this was a, a good conversation trying to, trying to put some, uh, some thoughts around data exfiltration. We'd love to hear from folks that are viewing these, uh, these videos to see what they think and, and how they're protecting their, uh, their valuable data from exfiltration attacks. And I uh, look forward to having you on another episode so we can continue this conversation around API attacks and, and what's out there and, and how attackers are trying to, trying to take advantage of, uh, uh, of APIs. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank you.